Welcome back to Grade 10 Mathematical Literacy. Today's topic is ratio. When we look at ratios, what are they? Well, a ratio compares two or more quantities expressed in the same unit. Do not include the units. Always write it in its simplest form, except when sharing in a given ratio. Values in the ratio must always be whole numbers, cannot be a fraction or a decimal. And generally, the ratio is separated by a colon, the values in the ratio. Let's look at the ratio basics. Ratio format is written 1 is to 4, and that is how we say it. But we can also write that ratio as a fraction 1 over 4. Units in a ratio. Ratios compare two quantities, two or more quantities expressed in the same unit and therefore do not include the units. A ratio, this is a relationship and it remains the same no matter what units of measurement. So let's have a look at an example of that. If I have one cup of concentrate, I require three cups of water. If I have one jug of concentrate, I require three jugs of water. So I have cups to cups, jugs to jugs. If I have 250 milliliters of concentrate, I am required to have three times 250 milliliters of water. The order in a ratio is very, very important. So if I have OROS is diluted with water in the ratio 1 to 4, what that means is the OROS forms one part and the water form, forms four parts. So if I look at this, I will take one part of concentrate, I will mix it with four parts of water, together I have five parts of liquid. Now, whether it is one cup to four cups or whether it is one liter to four liters, the units are the same. We are comparing the same quantities or the same units. Ratios must always be written in simplest form. Equivalent ratios are found by dividing both values in the ratio by the same number. So, we could find an equivalent ratio. Remember, it must always be written in simplest form. So what value can go into both of those without leaving a remainder? Well, 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 12 three times. So 4 to 12 simplified is 1 is to 3. Sometimes you need to change the ratios by multiplying both sides in the ratio. So write another equivalent ratio for 4 12. So if I say 4 multiplied by 3, then I must go 12 multiplied by 3. So 4 3s are 12 is to 36. Consider the OROS mixture, which is diluted in the ratio 1 to 4, and complete the table. So for every one cup of concentrate I have, I have multiplied, I have four times as much water. So if I have one cup of concentrate, I have four cups of water. 100 milliliters multiplied by four, will give me 400 milliliters. If I have 250 milliliters multiplied by 4, I will get 1,000 milliliters or 1 liter. 2,4 liters will give me 9, I will need to use 9,6 liters of water. And if I have 2,400 milliliters, I would need to have 9,600 milliliters of water. Now, the important thing to remember here is your total liquid would be 
one cup plus one cup. So I land up with two cups of diluted liquid. Writing ratios in unit form. Well, unit form means per one. Unit is one. Two ant poisons needed to, need to be diluted with water. Which ant poison is more highly concentrated? Well, it's very difficult to have a, to decide from the ratios that we have. We have three to two hundred and five to three hundred and fifty. So what we do is we make this one to something, and we make this one to something. So. If I have one milliliter of ant poison, how much water do I have? If I have one milliliter there, I have one milliliter there. So we are making it a unit, the ratio written as a unit. So what did I do to three to get one? Well, we divided by three. So I divide both sides by three. So I say three over three, two, 200 over three, and if I simplify, I get 1 to 66,7. I do the same on this side. I have 5. I've got to change my 5 to 1. How do, what do I do to 5 to get 1? Well, I divide 5 by 5 to get 1. That is my aim. What I do to the one side of the ratio, I do to the other side of the ratio. So I divide 350 by 5, and I will get 1 to 70. Which is the stronger ant poison? Well, I have one unit of ant poison to 66 units of water. So I have less water there. So my strongest ant poison is anti-ant. It is more highly concentrated because for each unit of poison, 66,7 units of water are added. Calculations involving ratios, for example, determine the missing number in a ratio. If we look at this floor tiling pattern, we can see that there's one blue tile, four little white tiles, and six green tiles. So we will see the ratio one to four to six. The one was blue, the four was white, and the six was green. How many tiles will be needed for 84 green tiles? What I'm going to show you now is a method I suggest you learn because ratio calculations pop up so often in MathsLit. Right, the first thing we're going to do is write down what is given paying attention to the order. Okay, so what we had was, it is blue to white to green. Blue to white to green. And we have one blue to four white to six green tiles. The next thing I have to look at is setting up an equation with what to find on the right hand side. So an equation has an equal sign. And again, I'm going to have my blue to white to green. The order is vitally important. If your order is wrong, your calculation will be wrong. Right, we have to find how many white tiles if I have 84 green tiles? So green tiles is 84. I have to find the number of white tiles. So from this, we can see that we are looking at the white to green tiles. So I'm going to look at this part of the ratio on the left-hand side, and I'm going to write it as 4 to 6 equals x to 84. Cannot stress enough times to make sure that your order is correct. Ensure that the units are the same. 
in this case, these are all tiles, but when we start using length and liquid, you've got to make sure that every all your units are in the same form, for example, centimeters or liters or grams, whatever the question requires. Make sure that your units are the same. Right, each side is a fraction. That is the next step. So we're going to look at each side of the, the equation. So I will have 4 over 6, white over green. So I will have white over green here. I then cross multiply. I always look for my x. 6 multiplied by x is 6x. Six 4 multiplied by 84 is 336. The next step is simplify if necessary. So in other words, you have to get x on its own. So I've got to get rid of the 6. So what I'm going to do to get rid of the 6, we divide by 6. Divide by 6. What you do to the one side, you do to the other side. So x equals 336 divided by 6 will give you 56. Always go back to your question and answer the question. 56 is what? Well, I need 56 white tiles. Okay, so 56 white tiles. Another calculation is dividing or sharing in a given ratio. So let's have a look at this example. To Liswe, Jethro and Babalwa buy a bag of 78 sweets. So in total they have 78 sweets and they pay 24 rand for the sweets. They agreed to split it up according to the amount of money that each contributed. So Liswe gave 4 Rand, Jethro gave 12 Rand, and Babalwa gave 8 Rand. So what I'm going to do we'll just abbreviate to Liswe gave 4 out of 24. 4 Rand out of 24. Now remember we said with ratios because the units are the same 4 Rand out of 24 Rand, we don't need to write the units. Jethro gave 12 Rand. So Jethro was 12 out of 24. And Babalwa gave 8 Rand out of 24. So Babalwa, 8 out of 24. So, what this actually means is that Chileswe gets 4 twenty-fourths of 78 sweets. So, all that is going to mean is that you say 4 over 24 multiplied by 78. Remember, of means multiply. Take out your calculator. And we have 4 out of 24 multiplied by 78. And he gets 13 sweets. We do the same with Jethro, and Jethro will get, so we're going to say 12 out of 24 multiplied by 78, and he will get 39 sweets. Babalwa gets 8 out of the 24, so 8 24 times 78, 
and that will equal 26 suites. The important thing here to remember is if I add up 13, 39 and 70 and 26, I must get to 78 suites because we had 78 to start with and we are going to share the 78 amongst us. So if I share them out, I've got to be able to get back to my original or my whole amount. That's all for ratio. Please will you go and do exercise 5 on page 31. Thank you.